Complexity and challenges come out of virtualization in a rack server or blade environment. See how HP handles interconnect and I.O. challenges on today's HP Tech Talk. Welcome to this episode of HP Tech Talk. I'm Ed McCaskey from SDR News. And of course, this is the series where we talk about how HP is defining a new style of IT. And of course, we cover all sorts of subjects. We uh, talk about cloud, we talk about servers, we talk about uh, storage, we talk about network issues. And we're really going to be combining uh, several of those topics today. I want to go ahead and introduce Kent Deshpande, who is uh, coming to us, uh, not from India, as he was a few weeks ago, but uh, directly uh, from California. Uh, thank you, thank you, Andrew. Uh, I'm Kandish Pandey, I'm the Global Product Manager for Virtual Connect, uh, which is a leading interconnect in the C-class based systems, not only C-class, I would say, it is across the plate market, and uh, I'm based in Palo Alto campus. Uh, <clears throat> I was uh, based in Cupertino, but recently we moved, and uh, I really like it here, it is beautiful, sunny, and of course, we are next to Stanford, where our founders got their education. Well, wow. and uh, it's uh, nice and sunny here in the Midwest, but that's only a temporary condition at this time of year. <laughs> so, um, I can certainly see how all the changes that have occurred as far as virtualization, when put into a traditional uh, rack server environment could create all sorts of problems. And, and even blade systems aren't immune from this. And uh, so just set a little perspective about what the, the business driver was to come up with this, uh, as I understand, a unique HP technology. Yes. So, you know, uh, the saying goes, uh, if you have a hammer, everything is a nail. So apparently, you know, if you only have the switches, then you think, okay, I can use the rack and tower technology uh, to the blade, and I will need uh, another Ethernet switch in a blade form factor to connect my network connectivity from the servers to the network. Uh, that changes a little bit as we go to the blade servers. So when you go to the blade servers, uh, of course, you're saving on the power, you're saving on the cooling. But at the same time, now you have this heterogeneous environment, right? You have multiple blades uh, within enclosure. And what you'd like to do is uh, have a interconnect, uh, which virtualizes the I.O. and allows you to provision the networking parameters, LAN or the SAN, in the real-time fashion uh, with the click rather than going old-time fashion like you're trying to go and manipulate your uh, zoning ACLs and it takes between days to weeks to just uh, bring the network with the server. Uh, in terms of what we realized was you know, the, the dynamics were changing and the compute was pretty much kind of part of the uh, network and there were a lot of uh, use case scenarios where the server admin now has to manage the networking as well. And uh, in the past, you know, the clear demarcation between the server and networking was no more true. Hence, uh, this whole innovation about the Virtual Connect. And what we've done with the Virtual Connect is have an interconnect which is flexible enough to be deployed to be operated by server admin, by storage admin, and by network admin. Uh, it, it is done in, in the, the concepts like, uh, constructs like uh, wire once change rate infrastructure. What it means is uh, we, we take the blades, we have the virtual connect, and we have a simple GUI management tool. And as you plug in your uh, servers, you can provision the profiles or you can even provision the profiles without the servers with the LAN, SAN, and other parameters 
uh, which will be pretty much can be done by the server admin as well. As I mentioned, these are the parameters uh, which draw virtual connect or uh, draw the HP to come up with the virtual connect. So it sounds that, that really the core uh, from an operational standpoint is the ability for someone with, with system architecture knowledge to define these profiles and then have them replicated by people uh, who uh, maybe that's not their particular area of expertise. So you get best of breed in each uh, of the of the areas. Yeah, that's correct, that's correct. So, you know, network admins, of course, the name itself says that uh, they're good in networking, right? Pulling the network lands and connect, connecting it to the core. At the same time, the servers do need networking and what we've done with this virtual connector profiles is uh, we have this profiles plus things like network access group, which will be defined by the networking admin, which can be part of the server profiles, and they can use, the server admins can use that server profile, assign it to a particular server. So now you are getting the network administrator's expertise. At the same time, you don't have to wait for network admin to go and provision the network. The server admin can take the profiles and they can apply it to the servers and provision the whole server within seconds or even within the operational limit they have instead of waiting for this, the previous way or the old fashioned way of doing the things. Well, it's certainly the um, agility and responsiveness that this engenders is, is one advantage. Also uh, the reliability because uh, you have a well-defined uh, uh, template in this profile that's being, that's being applied. But I understand that the underlying technology is, is Flex 10. How does that impact the capital expenses that you might have in the data center? Oh, you have done your homework. <laughs> so that's good to know. So uh, the Flex 10 uh, is a technology, again, uh, invented by HP. And the idea is very simple. I mean, it appears to be simple, but you know, when you go back in 2007, that was a cutting edge technology. So if you take a server environment, and uh, in a virtualized server environment specifically, what you need is uh, six NICs, right? One for the uh, server migration, one for uh, the sorry, VM migration, one for the vSwitch, one for the service console, and one for the storage, three NICs and one storage. And you, because if you want to have active and standby, you multiply it by two, you have eight. So three NICs and uh, two, uh, storage interfaces you need in a virtualized server environment. Now, prior to Flex 10, the way it was done was uh, you'll have the six adapters plus two HBAs, and what you do is now you connect the six adapters to the six Ethernet switch and two adapters to the two SAN switch. So you can imagine the number of components you have, the power you're consuming, and again, when you're trying to do that, uh, when you're using 1 GB adapters, uh, sometimes they're underused or sometimes they're overused. So if they're overused, then you have to have one more adapter. So there was no particular uh, technique or there was no tools to go and fine tune the bandwidth in the real time fashion with the six uh, adapters, so the six, uh, three, six NICs plus two adapters. With the virtue of Flex 10, uh, what we did uh, at HP was to take a 10 gigabit port and uh, carve out what we call as a flexible NICs. So you can carve out three flexible NICs and one can be either iSCSI, one can be Flex HPA, or you can still use it as a NIC. So one is for the storage. So for one 10 gig port, you are having four Flex NICs. And for the other 10 gig port, you are having four Flex NICs. So if you take a uh, dual port adapter, 10 gig, basically you are taking this whole six uh, NICs plus two HBAs and transforming them into one dual port 10 gig adapter. What it means is not only you are reducing the number of components on the server side, but that means instead of having six ethernet switch, two HBAs for the networking side, uh, two SAN switch, on the networking side, you can replace them with only two flex fabric. 
So if you take the math and you try to comparison in terms of number of components you're saying with the flex fabric, you are pretty much saving 95% of the component from the server to the network. And that is the strength of the Flex 10 innovation. Well, then I have to ask the question, is the true benefit derived from, from the technology and the secret sauce, or is the true benefit from the overall view and integration into management of the data center as a whole? Which do you think is most powerful? Uh, it is the overall, right? So at, at one end, right, we are providing you the wire once changer infrastructure with the profiles. At the other end, we are reducing the number of components, providing a simplified management. And interconnect, which is flexible enough, uh, can be operated by server admin, network admin, and storage admin. So if you, if you look at the overall uh, savings plus uh, the simplification, from the virtual connect is across the data center. It is not only just at the networking. It is pretty much across the data center, in my opinion. So what would the first step be for someone to learn more about virtual connect and see how it might be applied uh, in their data center? Uh, we do have a, a, a book called Virtual Connect for Dummies. Of course, uh, this is not for the dummies. Uh, this is an online, uh, uh, book. It is similar to the dummies format. Uh, you can download it. It's in electronic format, and, uh, and they can start looking into uh, this whole uh, what is the virtual connect is, the value addition with the virtual connect, and what I just spoke are the tip of the iceberg in terms of the innovations. You know, like the wire once changer infrastructure, or for that matter, flex ten, or flex fabric adapters, because we have done a series of innovation. And the flex, uh, the virtual connect for dummies, it covers or it does a good job of pretty much covering at a high level the innovations like flat sand, uh, which where we eliminate the whole sand with the virtual connect. Uh, that is the right, or uh, that's the right place to start with. And uh, and if you go to the HP, there is a go virtual connect homepage, hp.com go slash virtual connect. It'll take you to the landing page. Then you have all this uh, information about virtual connect. In addition. Uh, we have account team and I'm product manager. So based on the needs, we come in and we walk you through all the details about the virtual connect. Uh, plus we can do the demo of uh, how easy to install it. I mean, it's literally like a VCM. You can start, you can fire the VCM within like 10 minutes, your network connections are ready. It's amazing. Imagine a ethernet switch where you can plug it in. In 10 minutes, you can bring it up. I don't think so because there are a lot of things because you participate in STP and there are a lot of technical details that has to be addressed when you plug in a new Ethernet switch so that you don't generate the loops, you don't bring down the whole data center. Uh, with the virtual connect, that's not there because we are LAN and SAN safe. So you just plug it in, you fire the VCM, and within 10 minutes, your whole LAN and SAN connections are ready for the network. Obviously, it's an exciting time and, and uh, you actually see those profiles uh, kick in and, and go right to work. Right, right. Dan, thanks very much for uh, joining us here today. Uh, a really intriguing subject and I think that the Dummies book is just uh, right, uh, right in the wheelhouse where, uh, where I live there and a great place to start. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks to you folks for joining us here again on HP Tech Talk. Mm -hmm.